Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Ice Age Floodscapes. Perched atop a knoll in western Oregon's bucolic Willamette Valley, in the heart of wine country, lies a grouping of unusual boulders. These boulders are calling cards of the Ice Age floods. The boulders are composed of argillite, which is distinctly different than the relatively young and recent volcanic rocks native to this area. The argillite, about one and a half billion years old, is at least 100 times older than the age of the local rocks. Exotic boulders like these are called erratics. This one was rafted here in an iceberg during one of the many mega floods from the last ice age. The mega floods occurred most recently, about 15,000 years ago. This boulder is called the Bellevue Erratic, named after the closest town, Bellevue, Oregon. At about 90 tons, it is the largest known erratic within the Willamette Valley. Today, we know the Bellevue erratic was derived from Ice Age mega floods associated with the sudden draining of Glacial Lake Missoula in northwest Montana. These mega floods back flooded the Willamette Valley down to Eugene, Oregon, creating temporary Lake Allison which rose to an elevation of 400 feet, based on the maximum height of ice rafted erratics like these. Here's an image of the Bellevue erratic painted by my friend, Stev Ominski. As it might have appeared not long after the erratic bearing iceberg grounded along the western margin of Lake Allison. Lake Allison probably only lasted a couple of weeks or less before all the flood water drained out to the Pacific Ocean through Kalama Gap. Notice how the sun reflects off the planar surfaces of the erratic. The sun-reflected surface is a bedding plane that once lay at the bottom of broad river or a lake that existed in western North America 1.5 billion years ago. Back then, the only living organisms alive at the time were algal colonies. Notice the scratch marks or striations on the outer surface of the boulder. The linear striations may be inherited from a time when the boulder was entombed in an ice sheet thousands of feet thick. 
for eons as the ice crept slowly forward. It transported rocks plucked from the valley walls or up from the floor of the glacier. Entombed rocks that ground into each other would lead to disintegration and leave behind scratches on the rock surfaces with glacial movement. On the other hand, some of the striations may only be from modern scratching by humans. The Bellevue Erratic is now part of the Erratic Rock State Natural Site within Oregon State Park System. A short paved trail leads from the roadside at the valley floor to the top of the knoll where the iceberg containing the Bellevue Erratic became grounded during flooding. So where did the Bellevue Erratic composed of argillite come from? To determine this, we must look upstream from the Willamette Valley. This map shows the maximum extent of the Cordilleran Ice Sheet and Glacial Lake Missoula that existed during the Ice Age. The dark gray area indicates the extent of outburst flooding from Glacial Lake Missoula. Also shown is the location of the Bellevue Erratic in Oregon's Willamette Valley. This is where the Purcell Trench Lobe of the Coeur d'Alene Ice Sheet blocked the Clark Fork River, creating glacial Lake Missoula. Note that the nearest location for argillite rock, like the Bellevue Erratic, is over 400 flood miles away in the Idaho Panhandle. As ice continued to flow southward, like a conveyor belt, the Bellevue Erratic eventually became part of the ice dam for Lake Missoula, which failed every few dozen years, swept downstream with the flood water. Each ice dam failure and ensuing flood carried a new payload of floating ice rafted boulders downstream. Argillite and associated other metasedimentary rocks are part of what geologists call the Belt Supergroup, dated at one and a half billion years old. Several thousand feet of stratified bell rocks are exposed here at Eddy Narrows near the Idaho-Montana border. The steep valley walls were swept clean by the Missoula floods, clearly exposing the ancient river and lake deposits, later metamorphosed into mostly argillite and quartzite bedrock. Notice the well-stratified and blocky nature of the Precambrian metasedimentary bell rock, mostly argillite in the cliff walls. The wonderful preservation of stratification on the bell rocks can be attributed to the absence of life, including burrowing animals 1.5 billion years ago. Only primitive life forms like algal mats are occasionally preserved in these rocks. During the Ice Age, this rock quarry of argillite, located along northern Idaho's Clark Fork River, lay beneath thousands of feet of glacial ice that made up the ice dam for Glacial Lake Missoula. Notice the man-made retaining wall built from rectangular, multicolored blocks of belt rock removed from the quarry. Similar to other erratic boulders of argillite, that were rafted downstream. The argillite naturally separates along bedding planes into distinctive rectangular blocks and is extremely hard and durable. This allowed the rock to survive the long and torturous journey embedded in a floating iceberg through the Channel Scab land, down through the Columbia River Gorge before back flooding into the Willamette Valley. 
Here are some other erratics of argillite along flood paths of the Missoula floods. This erratic is located in central Washington, near the head of the Telford Scavland Tract, and this one on Rattlesnake Mountain near the Tri Cities. And finally, this one rafted high above the Columbia River along the White Bluffs. All of these boulders likely originated from belt rocks in contact with the ice dam for Lake Missoula that originated in northern Idaho or British Columbia. Argillite, along with associated quartzite of the belt supergroup, make up 10 to 15 percent of all erratic boulders along the flood route. Granitic rocks, however, like this one in Willula Gap, actually make up the majority, or about 75 percent, of all Missoula flood erratics.